Hi, this is Mr. New, and in this episode of Flash Training for East Career and Tech Academy, we're going to be talking about shape tweens, motion tweens, and classic tweens. And let's go ahead and get started. First thing, if you see here, I do have mountains. My effect I want to create is the sun setting. I want to see the radiance off of the sun get larger. And on top of that, I want to see the sky get dark. I want to see the mountains get dark. And I want to see stars appear. So I've created a lot of the objects already. But first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide the mountains for now. But actually, if we take a look at the sun, we'll work with the sun first. In my first frame, I have the sun in the sky, and at measure 60, if I hide the mountains, I have the sun that is set it, and notice that we have the large radiance coming off of the sun. Now, in order to create a shape tween, we need to have those objects as shapes. So we cannot create them as symbols. We would not be able to do this as symbols. So notice when I am clicked on this particular frame, it is a shape. And if I click on that object, it says up here that it's a shape. If I click on frame one and click on the object, it also shows that that's also a shape. So now if I right click in between those two, once I have the two shapes located where I want them to be, I right click in the timeline between those two keyframes and I create a shape tween. Now notice my timeline, it turns green and there is an arrow that is not broken. That means the shape tween was successfully created and also that that particular layer is now a shape tween. That's what the green tells me. I cannot have anything else on that layer. If I had other objects on that layer besides the two sun images, it would create some problems and you would see a broken dotted line here if that was the case. So if I scrub my playhead, you're gonna see the sun going down and you're gonna see those luminances off the sun getting larger. And that's basically how it's gonna look as it goes down. I'm gonna go ahead and reopen my mountains so I can see those. So when I scrub now, you see it drops behind the mountain. The next step I wanna do is I wanna be able to have the mountain and the sky get darker. I had to create the sky and the mountain as symbols. So the sky is here at the very first frame. If I right click, I can go ahead and create a motion tween. And once I create the motion tween, my entire layer turns blue. Now, if this was an actual motion and it was my first object I dropped in, it would actually create the length of the actual motion. But what actually happened here is it went ahead and extended it all the way out to my frame 90. Now, there's no motion attached to this yet. So I'm going to click on frame 60. In fact, I'll go a few frames past. And now what I want to do is click on the sky and I have the ability to change different effects. Any effect that can be changed to an instance can be turned into a motion tween. So I'm gonna to go to brightness and I'm gonna drop the brightness of the sky down to probably, let's see, about negative 75. Turns my sky nice and dark. And notice what happened there. It created a little diamond where that occurred. I'm gonna leave it on that same diamond, but this time I'm gonna click on my mountains First, I gotta create the motion tween on the mountains. I right click on the first frame, create motion tween. I now go back to frame, looks like 64, and click on my mountains. And I'm gonna change this effect to, to brightness. That's a little too dark. I think I'm gonna have it just darkened down to maybe a negative 45. So now as my sun sets, you're gonna see the sky and the mountains get darker as it sets behind the mountains. So give me a little bit more realistic look. Next step that I want to do is I want to create some stars. So I went ahead and created a star field and let's go ahead and unlock the stars. I'll go ahead and relock the mountain, sun, and sky so I don't accidentally change that. And notice I have stars out there in the sky. I've turned those into a symbol already. So I have stars and I created another keyframe with stars, but I don't want the stars just to pop on. So I'm gonna create this as a classic tween so you can kind of see the difference here. If I click on my stars in this first frame, and I'm gonna go ahead and change the alpha to zero, and then click in between and create a classic tween, I now have my stars gradually getting brighter as my sun goes down. Last thing is I kind of like this little character that I've created, so I'm gonna bring my goblin man back, and I'm gonna create him also as a motion tween. 
So if I unlock my goblin and right click and create a motion tween, that gives me the blue line. I'm going to pull him out, have him run across just as the sun's setting. He'll be on the other side. So when I go ahead and grab him and pull him across, it now gives me his exit point. So he now runs across the screen. I'll go ahead and lock that and get rid of my mask and let's take a look and see what we have. And I can test it in the flash player with a command return. And there it is in the flash player. And that is my motion tween, shape tween, and classic tween. In this exercise, you will be creating your own background. You can have, just want to make sure that I do see all three instances of a tween. I want to see a shape tween. Remember, it has to be a shape that morphs to another shape. I want to see a motion tween. Those are symbols. And I also want to see a classic tween in there. So those are our three different tweens. You will be using motion tween far more from now on than you will ever use classic tween, but realize you do have both tools at your disposal. Thank you for watching. This has been Mr. New for Flash Professional for East Career and Tech Academy.